Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football, a massive Big 12 matchup. Oklahoma State heading on the road to play BYU. You look at this BYU team sitting here undefeated, top 15 team in the country, and some BYU fans got a little frustrated with me over the last couple of weeks, kind of questioning just how good this BYU team is. And I'm here to raise my hand and say, I might have just been wrong about BYU. You go back and watch the last couple of games, and it it's not necessarily flashy, but when you just play solid football on both sides of the football, they're top 10 in the country in turnover margin. They don't take negative plays on offense. Play elite, elite, elite discipline defense. It's the recipe to winning a lot of college football games. That's what BYU has done. I'm kind of buying stock back to this BYU program. So appreciate the BYU fans for calling me out. I'm really fired up to get into this one. Now, before we do it, as always, let it fly in the comment section. I, I think this is a fascinating game where we've seen some good things from Oklahoma State, but the last three weeks, you haven't really seen that. You look at BYU, one of the hottest teams in all of college football, a lot of different ways you can see this game playing out. So let it fly in the comment section. Appreciate you guys rocking with it. If y'all do enjoy the content, Consider subscribing to the channel. And without further ado, let's get into this and let's start with this Oklahoma State offense going up against the BYU defense. That when I say they play disciplined defense, you turn on these BYU games and say they don't bust coverages, they don't let quarterbacks get out and kind of get outside the pocket, they tackle very well in space. I don't know if there's a top 10 NFL draft pick on this BYU defense, but when you have all 11 players seemingly on the same page every single play, it makes this BYU defense very hard to move the football against. I think they do a really, really good job mixing up the looks for opposing quarterbacks. They bring pressure in from a lot of different ways. It's not necessarily the best pure pass rush from the front four defensive linemen, and they, I think, know that. And so they're sending linebackers, they're sending safeties, they're getting to the quarterback in a lot of different ways. They're forcing turnovers, which I think is most important. 2.6 turnovers forced per game. That's number three in the country. The secondary, whether they're playing man or zone, it could, again, no busted coverages, very limited open throwing windows for opposing quarterbacks, a 50% completion percentage, number four in the country, only 5.2 yards per pass attempt. That's number four in the country. They make it very hard on quarterbacks, not only just complete routine passes, but they make it very hard to hit those explosive plays. And when you're defense and you force turnovers and you don't let the opposing offense create explosive plays, it's a really good recipe to have one of the best defenses in the country. And that's kind of what we're seeing from BYU. You look at Oklahoma State and say they haven't been able to get Ollie Gordon going. And that's kind of been the storyline for Oklahoma State. If you were a believer in Oklahoma State heading into 2024, it was a believer in Ollie Gordon. And you look at Oklahoma State's offense and say Ollie Gordon hasn't been able to get it going, averaging less than four yards per carry. They're only running the football 38% of the time, which is 129th in the country. They haven't been able to get their best football player on the field involved in productive ways that's kind of been the storyline because you look at the quarterback play most notably Alan Bowman and we don't know what quarterback we're going to get Mike Cundy's been very tight-lipped about who's going to be starting Friday night at the end of the day both these quarterbacks Alan Bowman Garrett Wrangle it these are quarterbacks that they need a run game they need pieces around them to have success like Alan Bowman's not a guy that you can rely on to go be a quarterback that's going to win you football games without a run game. Now you saw Alan Bowman win a lot of football games last year because he had a run game in Ali Gordon. Now this year, Ali Gordon not getting it going. Alan Bowman's really struggled. Now if you're BYU, there are some good wide receivers on this Oklahoma State team. I mean, Stribling, Brandon Presley, Rashad Owens. I think that's a very formidable wide receiver room that Oklahoma State has, but the quarterback play has been, you know, such a disaster that these wide receivers haven't really had the impact on a football game that you might expect. And I don't know if it gets any better, like a night game Provo, Utah against one of the best secondaries that we see in the country. It's hard to see this Oklahoma state passing attack magically start to figure it out. And so if you're BYU, can you first stop Ollie Gordon, which it used to be a really daunting task. And now you're sitting there saying, well, a lot of teams seem to be taking out Ollie Gordon of the football game. If you can do that, I have a really hard time seeing this Oklahoma State offense have a ton of success 
pushing the football down the field against this BYU team. I think another storyline for this matchup is Oklahoma State been very, very bad, turning the football over 1.8 turnovers per game. That's 101st in the country. As we said, BYU's top five in the country, forcing 2.6 turnovers per game. You kind of think that turnovers will play a part in this football game as well. Now you flip the side to this BYU offense, and it this was a this was a BYU offense that I had question marks going into 2024. Jake Retzlaff, again, kind of similar conversation that we just had with this BYU defense. I don't think Jake Retzlaff is going to be a top 10 NFL draft pick like Wilson was for BYU. This kid's a gamer at the collegiate level, and he's making a lot of really big-time throws. But I think more importantly, he doesn't take sacks. This BYU team's only given up sacks on 1.4% of dropbacks. And I think I, the offensive line's played really good. Actually, former Oklahoma State tackle Caleb Etienne's been phenomenal for BYU. But more importantly, Jake Retzlaff, he's so good in the pocket, manipulating the pocket, getting outside the pocket, avoiding pressure. And when you have a quarterback that can do some of those things and also not turn the football over, it's a really good recipe. And so, again, does Jake Retzlaff the most talented quarterback in the country? I'd probably argue no. This kid is playing. He's starting to figure it out at the quarterback position for BYU. I believe it was 0-4 as a starter last year. Really, really impressive. Obviously, 6-0 as a starter to start 2024. Two really good wide receivers. I mean, I think notably Chase Roberts. This kid, I think, just catches everything that goes his way. Lassiter, really, really talented as well. That's kind of primarily how they run this passing attack. You look at the run game and say, you want a little bit more from the run game. And I think the injuries that BYU has endured in the running back room, they're still trying to figure out like, how do we want this run game to look and who are our guys to run the football, but they run it in a lot of creative ways. Like you see a lot of speed options. You see, they, it's not necessarily the best rushing attack that you see in the country, but they're running the football pretty dang well because they're getting really creative in terms of how they want to run. And I thought against Arizona, that was probably the best this rushing attack has looked which is meaningful for BYU because they want to be balanced on offense. It's almost a pure 50-50 split between running and throw, th- uh, excuse me, throwing the football. If you can get this rushing attack, now I think that's what's most exciting for BYU fans. If you can let this rushing attack you know, take a step going to the back half of 2024, that probably unlocks this BYU offense just a little bit more. This is a game where you might be able to get the running attack going. You look at Oklahoma State, they are decimated in the front seven with injuries. Allowing 5.6 yards per carry, that's 119th in the country. This is one of the worst rushing defenses that you see in the country. You look at West Virginia, the game they just played. West Virginia ran the football for over 300 yards. One of the things I'm looking for is can BYU get this rushing attack going against an Oklahoma State front seven that's been really, really bad the last couple of weeks. Getting into the pick, I think we've all learned by now. And this is, I continue to say this, night games in Provo, Utah are one of the hardest places to win a college football game. I don't think a ton of national college football fans understand this, but BYU fans damn sure understand this. I ain't picking against BYU the way they're playing with how Oklahoma State's been. Like, Look at the trajectory of these two teams, Oklahoma State sliding in the wrong direction, potentially going to a new quarterback on the road here in Provo, Utah, versus a BYU team in general that seems to be just gaining confidence. And they're at home. They're a top 15 team in the country. Give me BYU to cover the nine and a half points. And to the BYU fans, again, I I apologize for uh, maybe hate. I wasn't hating. It was sleeping on this BYU team. Give me the Cougs at night, Friday night in Provo, Utah. Appreciate you guys rocking with it. If y'all do enjoy the content, Consider subscribing to the channel. We'll talk to y'all later. Peace.